Okay, so here's Circuit. You can see it's kind of about the size of an iPad. It's thicker, obviously. Um, it's got a headphone input on the front here. On that, that side. On this side, it's got a battery compartment. It takes six AA batteries. On the rear edge, you've got power. Uh, you can power it with a power supply. It doesn't accept power over USB, but it can connect to a Mac or PC for USB MIDI, although it doesn't do sound over there yet. There's a MIDI in and out little micro jacks, and you get two adapters to connect to your MIDI hardware, so you get those in the box. And you get left and right mono outputs. On the front panel, if I just go back into note mode, You've got these 32 RGB pads that change their colours depending on what's going on. It's Everything's backlit so it's really easy to use at night or on a stage or you don't have to have, uh, you don't have, to have the lights on to use it. You've got these eight macro knobs at the top. These are endless so they keep going round and round. And there's a big fat filter at the top right here, if you can see that. And that filters the whole output of the unit. You can see that these lights um, go brighter and dimmer as well to tell you that things are happening is quite useful. There's a lot of use made of the shift command for kind of doing alternate, accessing alternate functions. Um, that makes a lot of sense when you actually use it. It's nice, it's really nice to use, it's incredibly portable, it sounds wicked. Let's have a quick listen to what it sounds like. So although it may look like a controller, Circuit is actually a groove box with synthesis inside it. You get two polyphonic synthesizers, and a four-part drum machine. Now what I've got here is I've got my sessions open and sessions are chains of patterns uh, that you can use to make into songs essentially so if I just play one of these you'll get an idea of how this works. Here are my different parts. So here's synth one. These are the notes that are being played on synth one and these are the steps in the sequence. I can, for example, if I press shift and note, I can expand my keyboard to show a bigger keyboard. You can see that chords are being played here. If I stop it. I can play different chords. Go back into regular mode. If I was to solo up this part, which I can do by pressing mixer and then turning the other parts off, like this, you'll see that for any selected part, these macro controls up here alter the sound. So if I just play that part in isolation so you can hear it, I can mess about with the sound. And I could do that with any part. So I could go back in and turn on, there's my kick drum. Now if I select the kick drum, you can see these are the two drum parts here, drums one and two. Those would be drums three and four. But I can mess with this kick drum. Uh, there's a big filter as well. It affects the whole output. If I wanted to start and build a pattern up from scratch, what I could do is I could select a blank session slot. Here's one. And I might start with my first drums. If I wanted to choose a patch, what I can do is I can choose shift and then press the instrument. And then all the pads here become patch selectors. So there are 32 patches for each drum. So, for example, if I record this one, That's drum one, drum two, okay, I could add a little bit of swing if I wanted, you can see that the, uh, the pads here light up to actually tell me the swing value, if I was to change that, okay. Added some swing. Could change the tempo as well. It's currently 120. Could slow it down a bit. 
we'll speed it up a bit. So I've got a couple of drums going. I could bring in a synth. Again, the same thing works for patch selection, so shift plus the instrument, and I could choose a patch. Press record. Go down a couple of octaves. Might decide I don't like that patch, so I could change it. That's better. And then if I go back to my synth, I can play with that noise. Then I could bring in a couple of drums, these are the hi-hats. Again, I could choose a patch. I don't know what that is yet, find out. And these are open hats. I can do things like changing the gate for certain notes. So here's synth one, for example. If I click on shift and gate, which I can just about do with one hand. No, I can't. Okay. I click on gate. For any of these steps, can set the gate length so I could make it longer. Obviously that doesn't really work for that sound. So I could select my step again and I could put the gate down back to where it was. I can also do the same thing with velocity for any step. So for these steps here, for any selected step that's lit up, this is the velocity, that's the gate value. So you can make notes longer or shorter and you can make them have different velocities.